Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm bringing you a matchup between the Blime and Hamster once again. Today is the Class 1 Invitational, as well as, of course, the Invitational that where invites are extended up to some up-and-coming players and some newer players that are experienced in other RTS games. That's March Invitational B, prize pool of a $225 amount, and that means first place is going to get 37 bucks, among other things, for second and third. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm casting this particular set is that these are competitive players. They will have understood their matchup. Apparently, Hamster has improved his Protoss, and we know that Nablime has always been playing for a lot of Zerg stuff, so let's see what we see in Axiom. Nablime in the top right of this map by Biddy B, which is going to be in the pool for our tournament, and Hamster in the bottom left as the Protoss. That's clearly yellow Protoss. And here, oh man, is this midnight green? Yeah, all right, I'm getting the colors right. So, this is Cosmonarchy. This is a very different experience than Brood War, but in some ways it's the closest thing that we've ever had to a successor to a game which tries to learn from it. And it's obviously a mod of Brood War. You're seeing some normal graphics like the Nexus and the Hatcherosk and the Droleth, which of course has different, uh, you know, gra different names, but the same graphics. And then you got the Scribe, which is remodeled by uh, project contributor Solstice, who is actually doing a lot of remodeling. Uh, he's uh, cooking up a new Calculus graphic, which is one of the air units that Zerg can make in the mid game once they hit tier two. Maybe we'll even see that in this matchup. If so, I'll point it out so you guys can know that there's an improvement to that coming online. A lot of our graphics do need to be improved and, and revamped and rejigged. Eventually, we want to re-render literally every graphic in the whole game, including the base assets. And I feel like when we have something like that going, ever since we remodeled the Dracodin, thanks to project contributor Balithal, uh, nobody complained about it being renamed from the Dragoon. It just looks so different. It's clearly not a Dragoon, and we will definitely see those in this matchup as a gateway is halfway done for Hamster. One of the main things that you want to keep track of that is going to make this sort of matchup look very different is the rate of economy is a little bit slower to ramp up compared to Brood War. So you will want to set for further saturate your minerals in your main mineral line. And your workers actually are more efficient by default because we've significantly improved wandering. We've made it so that there's no acceleration or deceleration on the workers. And we also made it so that the uh, worker movement speed is a little bit slower, but the mining rate is much faster. And so well, all this, all these changes end up to un you understanding, there's an interesting cheeky pile on there. Uh, all these changes that uh, really result in the fact that your workers are efficient if you put two of them on the same node, and then the third worker is half as efficient. And that's essentially the cap, is three workers per node, but that third worker is going to be less efficient than if you transferred it to a fresh base. So you still want to transfer your workers, but you want to do so later in the game than Brood War for your natural. And for Zerg in particular, sometimes they can just make a new batch of workers, right? Because we've got multi-building select, we've significantly increased the selection limit to 252. It's effectively, you know, uh, it's meant to be endless or infinite or whatever, uh, but, you know, it's just an arbitrary engine limit right now that we'll eventually maybe look at improving, but it's uh, it seems like it's not very in scope. You very rarely get that many units for one player in the current scope of things. Now, a Legionnaire has moved, made its way across the map. This is a new Protoss unit. You're going to see a drill try to foment over here as they uh, drill that's attempt to fight back. And the Legionnaire is really all about pressuring, but as soon as these Quasilisks hatch, this is a new unit afforded by the pool, uh, they are going to be able to do plenty versus that. And you also just saw a demonstration of cliff advantage. When you stand over here you uh, on the high ground, you'll have plus two weapon range going down a cliff. That's a very, very important mechanic to understand if you're trying to learn Cosmonarchy compared to, you know, stock Starcraft, where there's randomness and, you know, chance to miss and stuff. The pylon that Hamster had put down is obviously completely gone now. It's been canceled and he is putting down his own Nexus. So he will have expansion tempo over his opponent who has decided to go for a lot of military units, a big flood of military units moving their way across the middle of the map, including some Zeth Cores, formerly known as the Zergling. Obviously, this new unit, the Quasilisk, also modeled by Solstice. We've got Double Dracodin. They do very, very well versus Quasis because they have the, the range. They're going to have even more of a range advantage in this context. But the Zethra Cores will make them struggle a little bit. We don't have damage types like uh, you would normally see. So these units are not like light and they're small units that take, you know, reduced damage from the Dracodin. It's just the dynamics of their stats make it so that it's really, really easy for the Zerg to overwhelm in this position. Trying to depower the gateway is a pretty good shout, but it's not currently making anything yet. A couple of redundancy pylons being gone down. The third Dracodin has arrived. We uh, don't yet see any of them having died. Hamster's moving back and forth, trying to make use, you know, very, very good use, mind you, of flash shielding, but he's losing a lot of workers. Quasilisks shred worker lines very efficiently. 
So as the additional units are flooding in, Nablime doing his best to keep uh, the pressure on. A Legionnaire has spawned, but again, I've said this many times in this particular matchup, Legionnaires do not, str they struggle versus Quasilisks in particular, and they're much better versus like single target units that have high attack rate or something, like a Vulture or whatever, a uh, high attack cooldown, I should say. That Draconid almost got killed, but I think this is a basically a, a completed all in. Nablime hasn't really made too many additional workers. It doesn't really seem like Hamster's gonna have what it takes to pull out of this situation, even though he is so kind of close to stabilizing because of the, the lax target selection, but now the pylon's going down. No more units are gonna be afforded. He did lose one of his Draconids. That was kind of like the nail in the coffin, and his workers have fallen, so he's not gonna be afforded an opportunity to use both of his Nexuses there to catch up in the worker count, uh, and th that's basically it. So Hamster is gonna fall to the all-in play from Nablime early on the board for our Zerg player, but we've got plenty more matches where that came from. And finally, on a different map, if you've been following these cast overs, you'll know that a lot of the maps and a lot of the matches have been on Axiom, but let's move on and see what comes next. We come to Derelict. Hamster in the bottom left yet again. Nablime in the top right. This map is also by project contributor Biddy B, map maker Biddy B. And he's also a sponsor, so he's uh, his company is advertised in the game. Isn't that funny? That's like the power of uh, our modding that we can do. You guys may remember, if you're longtime Brood War heads like me, you may remember eras where sponsor logos were baked into the map's broadcast feed for ASL or something. It wasn't ASL back then, but, you know, similar titles and stuff like that. Uh, definitely something to think about. Like, I remember a Pringles logo and all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, you know, th there's, there's things that we can do as well. Uh, the players also see this, so I made sure to put them in locations where they're not going to... Uh, you would say like you you would worry if the if they were like obscuring units or something like that. They can't do that, so it's uh, completely just a, a just a little bit of a, a product placement there, if you will. And that is the power that we have, thanks to Biddy B's generosity and uh, his donations. And he's also donated maps to us, if you want to think about it like that. So we have Axiom first, then Derelict second. Pool coming out this time before the proxy hatch or the uh, macro hatch, I should say. Uh, now, Blime is a player who does have a couple of different tricks up his sleeve when it comes to Zerg. I'm very interested in seeing what other people are going to come up with as far as build orders go, because there's certain people who try new things and have novel strategies or novel ideas. Uh, like Jack Yelansky is a Zerg player who apparently gave Nablime the idea for certain details, right? Like, hey, um, you know, you can you can maybe go for an Oval Death early on, an Overlord, right? And, and transport your Cagrant Seizian into a better position for, ex uh, you know, covering an expansion. And it looks like just now, we did want to see a Macro Hatch over here for Nablime uh, into his natural. And unfortunately for him, it's going to have to be a Macro Hatch right now because he is not going to be able to clear this unless he wants to wait for, you know, Zethra Course to pop out. I mean, Quasis do okay versus this. The Pylon only has one armor, so the, the Quasis with one armor pen do take, uh, do, do provide full damage. But you're going to see a more defensive hatch over here that's going to spread Kagra around the cliff area over here, the choke, and that'll be more than enough for what we need here. We're actually going to see one pair of Zeths being made behind this. This looks kind of similar to the, pra uh, the past, except, you know, this time around we're not going to be uh, relying on a fast Legionnaire from Hamster's side, so he's going to get his Dracodin count up a lot earlier, and that is going to allow him to be a little bit better at handling this. In previous versions of Derelict, this cliff extended one tile further down, one isometric grid tile further down, and that allowed you to, to use Defender's Advantage with that extra range from the, from the cliff in a much better situation. And so I think uh, even with this small change, you're still in a kind of a weird spot where, you know, it, it's kind of hard to siege this place. You, you kind of have to come in from the bottom, right? So we'll see what Nablime wants to do. But Hamster, meanwhile, is thinking about taking his expansion at some point. He does have double gate production fairly consistently, so it'll slow down his first Nexus. He knows his opponent is going to be going for something a little bit more on the uh, macro side, since he did see the hatch coming down. He saw the intent was clearly to expand. Technically, that could be a mind game, but it's probably not going to be one. However, he hasn't been attacked yet, and there hasn't been high nor tail from his Zerg opponent. So he's going to go ahead and start moving out. I, I like adding a Zealot because it means that you can help try to bust Circuits if they've been put down. The Sunken Colony is now the Circuit Seizian. <clears throat> and it does pretty well uh, versus the Legionnaire and even a little bit versus the Draconin. Uh, but you're, you're going to be in a struggle bust if you're up against like a lot of Zealots. Or even one Zealot can maybe make the difference. Now, you can see here the Draconins are going to outperform this army very, very well. Here's the Zealot to soak up even more damage 
Uh, and as soon as they the Protoss unit stops taking damage, after two seconds, it will start to regenerate shields very fast. And this kind of burst fire, these like little small engagements, can really benefit the Protoss player. Now, he's only got the one Zealot. So when he sees multiple circuits, he is going to be in an awkward position. He is going to try to focus down this one that's being made. He'll lose his low HP Draconin as a result, and he's going to go ahead and burst down the other one. No cancellation on that one. That was still a, a, you know something you could get your worker back from. But at this stage, he's going to wait for his Legionnaire to come in to soak up more damage. Maybe even think about more and more units being made. Uh, his own expansion about halfway done. This is going to force out a lot more military units to handle this. And he's already lost two workers worth of static defense. So Nablime is in a bit of a pickle here. The Zealot forcing in the engagement. That's going to thin the herd and force out even more military units. And look at this. I think this circuit is just going to get cracked over here. Looks like it will. And now Hamster can cancel the attack onto that. And he can just focus this down. You're going to force to remorph that. It is a little bit bruised already. However, with no... Uh, okay, there's more melee units coming. I was going to say with no more melee units coming, that might be a little bit awkward. He's trying to lay a burrow trap, but obviously Hamster did see that. The uh, Legionnaire is going to get damaged a little bit there. Take a little bit of hull damage. Not exactly what you would want to see. But for Dracodins, once again, this is a very, very lethal early game situation. And Nablime has half the workers of his opponent not mining at all from his natural and barely mining anything. No no Vespian coming at all. And so we can actually see that Hamster is in a very commanding position right now. He can start to stack up his forces. The Dracodins getting surrounded a little bit. Nablime finding a way to make it work with just Zethrocores right now. And get, getting even one Draken in there alleviates a lot of pressure. Getting two is huge. So you are going to have to fall back to this little outcrop here with the ramp. That is going to be a pretty big deciding factor. And uh, one of the things Nablime is doing is he's keeping track of the middle of the map with this one Zeth. Hamster hasn't come over here at all, I don't think. And as a result, he technically doesn't know if Nablime hasn't, you know, put some workers over there. Because you can return the gas that you can harvest directly from the geyser into the treasury uh, in the middle of the map. Because it's neutral, and so it counts as an ally. You can return to allied uh, town centers in Cosmonarchy. So we do have a Zeth Flood kind of like moving around the other side of the map. Uh, the middle gets cleared. There's only the one Warden, an embassy coming down. This actually could be a very lethal counterattack. The only concern I have is whether or not there's enough here to stop a run by. Because, you know, I guess there's not... I mean, there are some units over here, right? But, oh, there's a Zealot here as well. That's actually going to be a very, very big difference. It's crazy how much of a difference one Zealot will make versus the, the Zether cores. They can focus it down, uh, and maybe they even should. Uh, but they are trying to see if they can, for, for one, get a lot of scouting information done and maybe get some worker kills as well. They haven't actually done anything yet besides the scouting and maybe, I mean, they have forced a Hamster to come, come back. I think he maybe gave this run by more respect than it maybe deserved. Not a bad attempt at the surround, getting a lot of damage on dealt on that Draconin, but at the end of the day, I don't think the Zets did anything. They took up a lot of APM, but they did relieve a lot of pressure from the, the front. And again, I don't think Hamster had to do that, but he's playing conservatively. He's He knows that he's advantaged right now. Uh, and that is a lot of uh, pressure release for him as well. Now he can think about uh, taking the middle of the map, which is where his scribes are going on their journey. Again, it's uh, like I said on Axiom, it's three workers to fully saturate a node that's consistent between gas and minerals. But if you want to be fully efficient, uh, you can absolutely do that with just two. So well, he looks like he's going to do... Okay, he's going to split them up now. I was going to say that would that would be a better option there. Now, we do have workers coming out. It's all workers. Nablime doing a bit of a gambit here, hoping that he can, you know, get behind a situation where uh, he can use just his static defense to fend off uh, any additional ground attacks. And right now, with a witness coming, that's going to be able to see things. So, detection in Cosmonarchy works differently than it does in StarCraft 1. In Cosmonarchy, you can actually see the units that are being made. You, you basically see all the information I see when there's something being made. So, for example, if an Oveleth walked in here, you could click on the Grand Library as Nablime, and if it was detected within the Avalath's vision range, you would actually see that there's an Atreus coming. There's a heavy Strider unit for the Protoss, and it, you could even see the progress bar. You'd see what's queued up and stuff. So very, very uh, cool ability because you can see like the progress bars more discreetly. And obviously you see this is a Hydra then coming. So you, you got a lot of information. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more than you would normally get just from having that detection. And so, you know, if Nablime were in a better economic position, he could have his own anti-detection. He could have his Avaleth to scout this witness. He could absolutely be in a situation where he tries to uh, respond in kind, but he has no no units right now, no military units. It's straight up that. That's what this counter in the top right is, workers over military. So he's caught up in the worker department, but I think it's very clear that he's behind in terms of map tempo and tech. It's still kind of scary to be in this situation if you're hamster, uh, but... You know, he's, he's amassing a fairly large army. He is going for an Envoy, so I would love to see an Atreus drop or something like that. Atreuses do super well versus workers and versus the pool units as well because they deal splash damage on their attack and they have two armor. So Quasilisks deal reduced damage. Zets deal full, but they d f drop like flies. 
it looks like based on the gas bank and the fact that he's getting a very fast ski backed, Nibleim is going to go for a Schizer Core counterattack. And Atreuses are really good versus that as well, because again, they deal splash. We've got a Cantavis more than halfway done. That's going to be a very powerful caster unit. People will f be familiar with their combat role or, or whatever you might call it uh, within StarCraft 1. It's a, obviously a bit different in this particular project, but uh, in this game, they have Psionic Storm, which lasts longer, deals less upfront damage, uh, but it, it can actually deal more maximum damage over time. And, uh, okay, it's a pylon and a legion. Oh, this is great. I love this. So we're actually going to see a very cool trick. So the legionnaire didn't really get a chance to show off its passive. It attacks a unit, and then it can jump to that unit. So what you're going to see is Hamster pull the maneuver where he's going to hop his units up the cliff. At the same time, there's a quasi pushout. I don't know if Nablime is seeing this. No, he's not. He's only now going to pay attention that it, it, the hopscotch is happening. And you can see it takes a little bit of APM to pull off, but suddenly there's a bunch of Legionnaires in his base, and he had no idea. The contain is up, so there's not really a backstab counterattack possible. And as the units fall away, we can pull the trigger here, although there is no melee. So that's a little bit, you know, maybe you could have kept like half of the Legionnaires here for the purposes of... Uh, jumping straight over, but that is a sick play from Hamster. Did a lot of uh, economic damage. Obviously, delayed, for, you know, revealed the Skitter cores, and that's a that's a big uh, you know sort of thing in the coffer, right? He even uh, scar yeah he scarpered with the with the pylon as well. A little bit of an inefficient trade here, trying his best to get the work done on these uh, defenses. Uh, but, you know, these are also done in a very awkward position. And, you know, this might force the skits to come back as well. Like, you know, at this stage, you don't necessarily want to be in a situation where what you're focusing on is trying to backstab your opponent when your front gate is being knocked down. And Ablime was almost in that situation, but his 12 skits are cores, a little bit, maybe actually a 13 or so. Uh, there's a Cantavis and three Atreuses over here. The splash damage is gonna be more than enough. He can pull this Atreus back. And if you cast Hallucination over here, that can be a pretty big deal. Unfortunately, oh, no, the Storm is going to be cast a little bit late and not exactly the, the best choice there. Uh, hallucination is now a spell that you can use to debuff your opponent's army uh, by putting an on hit on them. So what it does is it basically makes it so that any projectile, any attack that hits the unit that is hallucinating, that attack will be cloned for half damage. So it's like a 1.5x damage multiplier because it, it essentially creates another projectile. More economic damage here for Nablime as he tries to drop his opponent's worker line down a peg. Uh, but you can see it takes a long time to kill workers in Cosmonarchy by comparison. And uh, he's now dropped down from 13 skiths to 8. Meanwhile, pylons and two a pylon and two legionnaires. Interesting. Uh, there's not really any follow-up drop for that, but you know he can at least uh, think about doing that. There wasn't a, a patriarch. Yeah. Okay. That, that I saw an optecto. What I thought was an optecton be put up from that ancestral archives, but the patriarch is instead a great choice because it's actually getting a lot of value doing the splash damage here. And this is a very committed attack from the blind. Remember, he's not even got a third base up. So, it, you know, in principle, hamster has the better economy. He's got you know, more gas nodes that he can harvest from. He's got more mineral fields that he can harvest from for better efficiency. Even workers, actually a little bit ahead in workers, despite the Zephyrass that's happening over here. And the army was totally inefficient for Nablime. He's got no tech coming. The two Legion airdrop apparently did a lot more work than I expected to. Talking about like six, seven workers killed, judging by the corpses, which in Cosmonarchy lasts longer. So it helps because then when you're, you're checking out things like, oh, how much damage did this drop do? <laughs> you actually get a little bit of uh, value from that. And that's gonna expend more workers because hey, you, you gotta defend against those drops. So you're gonna make more uh, workers into buildings. Nablime is struggling a little bit over here. Uh, and that is going to clear out just a couple of random units that are over there. When the Zerg has to trade more cost efficiently than the Protoss, you're in for a rough go of it. And Nablime, he sent a worker over here to try to take his third. Couldn't because of this very well-placed Legionnaire. Sent another worker thinking, maybe I just didn't do it properly the first time because of the chaos of the game. And now he has lost two workers to that. He still can't take his third. He's thinking about what to make. Five Hydras... One is Irakor, and now he's going to go ahead and engage on a very, very fortified cliff. The Patriarch staying alive versus all of those skits was incredibly uh, important in that situation because it's such a power spike type of unit. When it debuffs enemy units, uh, all of when it hits them with their basic attack, all units that then attack those units are then going to get additional shields back. So it's almost like they, you give them shield steal in, in a way for your whole army. It, it significantly increases the efficacy of your force, the staying power of your force. So while the top left is going on with that fight, we've got another skirmish over here with a bit of a run by, and this is going to get cleaned up nice and easy, but, you know, it's, it is pulling Hamster's forces out of position, a bit of a weakness from him. He's got another Patriarch out. It doesn't deal impeccable damage by itself. You know, Dracodins probably out DPS it for single targets, but it does deal splash, so it's very good versus the stacks and, you know, even clumped up Hydras and stuff. Some good worker damage, but look, we've got way more worker 
workers, and Hamster has started a Solarian from his Argosy in his natural, so that is going to be a pinnacle uh, or a very pivotal moment, I would say, because there's not really any heavy anti-air. Like, Hydras are your best bet, and all of the things on the ground zone away the Hydras. So you need something that can maybe do a little bit better versus not just the Solarian, but you need to contend with this ground force, too. It's like, the Solarian is almost surplus to requirements here, because if, even if it wasn't there, the ground force would still overpower him, but it's it's almost like putting a even more obvious ticking bomb on, like, I can just walk these air units in and maybe do some pretty pivotal damage. We're not going to see a, a diet act instead for recall or anything, so unfortunately we'll only get to see one very nifty trick that the Protoss have their, up their sleeve with the Legion Air Jump, but I really like seeing that. It was a really cool little uh, thing that uh, Hamster has been practicing. I love the Zoning Storm. It doesn't do that much damage, but anything softening them up, look, as long as they stay further in there, that is going to mean that a lot of them end up taking a lot of extra damage. Hallucination Fields even for further splash from the Atreuses. And even though there's a big collapse and you might clear the ground army, at what cost, right? Like you've lost your whole standing force from Neblime. Still a good play overall. You gotta give tip your hat to him. The game's not exactly over yet. Uh, but despite all of the flanking, despite like the best possible situation for Nablime, he still only narrowly squeaked out a victory. And now he's got to think about drawing up because he's further behind an economy. And there are enough Protoss here to play defensively. We don't have a nine o'clock base set up yet. And the scribe is moving down to six to take that. So you're, yeah, the Protoss is going to go up a base basically for the whole game. Uh, he's even escorting it with a couple of Dracodins just in case there were some Zeths. H Hydras are popping over here. I don't know if they saw the Legionnaire standing guard, but you know. That, that's not exactly what you would do to, to take that base. There we go. Now we're going to leave one Hydra over there. Not a bad shout, right? It will out DPS the Legionnaire, so not a bad, not a, not a really rough situation there. In some ways, it might be worth it to test, like, common interactions from Tier 1 units just to see who 1v1s so that you can do stuff like that. But uh, uh, Draconin is going to come up and clear this out. Got a Zeth run by that will spy 6 o'clock. Might be a pivotal action point here for Nablime. But again, he has not remaxed his army. He has been busy trying to remax his economy, and he still is not going to be on even terms with Hamster. The cascading uh, series of failures, or maybe you could call it just successes from, from Hamster, uh, being more than enough to deal with this. So he's going to go ahead and try to pivot onto the six o'clock base. There are some units nearby, but they're a little bit further back than what you would want. Let's see. The response time is pretty quick. They're already on their way over. These Dracodins are going to be hunted down. And actually, this is taking away from the focus onto the Nexus. It, it, it will be canceled. I wonder if maybe he could have kept this army a bit more committed to, uh, you know, by like forcing him in that situation. The Solarian's going to come out and be revealed. Do we have another one? Yes, another one just finished. So the Hydras are going to fall away. Tier 2 is starting 16 minutes into the game. When you realize that you're in that situation, Nablime only now taking 12, at least he's going to go up a base for the first time in this whole match. But I still think that that can be a very pivotal point. You know, we, we have to start to see anti-air defenses put down because the Solarian has been revealed. That's going to further tax the worker, uh, you know, the, the economy of Nablime, the worker count, saturation of different things. Six o'clock going down yet again. Nothing here to contest it. Maybe a bit of an oversight because he probably could have done that just to slow it down further. At, at You know, maybe not the game winning uh, ch chance in that respect. Oh, okay. We're going to see a storm drop. So the thing about the Cantavis in the, in the Envoy, obviously it doesn't kill workers as fast because you have more time to react to it. But when you, you basically shut down mining for a longer period of time, right? And so the, the ability is likely to receive another revision at some point. But for now, like these are the current dynamics that you might be able to expect if Cantavis's get used in the tournament. So six o'clock is halfway done for Hamster. He will again be for the first time ever behind in the economy, in workers, in base count uh, versus his opponent uh, since maybe the very beginning of the game uh, in some ways. Although even then, I think it was probably contestable. And this is a bit of an overextension from the Tier 1 army, and you, you can tell, like, okay, he was not really able to get too much done. The Patriarchs are great support units, man. They do so, so well for debuffing those kinds of units. And uh, keeping the, uh, you know, melee units in particular alive, because as soon as they land an attack, they basically get some shields back for that. 12 o'clock getting fortified over here. When you hit Tier 2, which is done now, you will have access to the heavier... Uh, heavier, the more expanded, ooh, 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 the more expanded uh, defenses. So you can mutate these into higher tiers. You can see that actually happening right now. This is a Spear Tith. I think some of these are also Spear Tiths. Yeah, that, that's going to be basically anti-Solarian. Uh, uh, but, you know, you can still head to 12 o'clock and, and punish this because he's very heavily relying on that static defense. Coming in with a skiff push at the very, you know, umpteenth hour, uh, 11th hour, but there's an engram in both mineral lines and there's an Atreus here as well. So you're not really going to get too much value out of this. This is actually a lot of gas that's you know, expended without really getting too much done. 
Some Zealots are going to get harassed, but look at that. Like, even the, the Engram over here is still doing plenty of damage. Move out happening over here. Zeth is going to spot that in the middle of the map because at some point those four scribes that were there got cleared. Cantave is still available if, uh, you know, Hamster wants to look for a way in, but Nalan's got a very, very good amount of worker coverage. I was ready to call this game for Hamster earlier, but losing that ground army was a bit more of a uh, slow to, a, you know, a stopper, showstopper to him. He's going to go ahead and get a storm off. That's going to provoke some of these units. And look, he cancels the attack order by loading up the uh, the the Cantavis there. So that's even better for the damage and softening all those units up that weren't going to necessarily contribute too much anyway. Zealots come in, completely annihilate the Spear Tith immediately. And now there's only the two circuits. This is a situation where, you know, relying on static defense might not be the best play. Now going to go ahead and recompile his force here, Hamster, trying to make sure that he's in a pretty good spot. Keeps the, the Envoy... Uh, loaded up with that Cantavis. It's certainly more mobile that way. We've got a couple of spying units just sort of lurking around over here. Still no fourth base, uh, or fifth base rather, for either player. Uh, not really able to take uh, three o'clock or nine o'clock. They're much more open to ground assault. And uh, look at that over the cliff being able to get some value based on the Solarian's vision range. Vithralisks are being made out of those skits. Try to focus down things like the Solarian's. And it looks like Hamster's fancying an attack into the 12 o'clock location. The reinforcement point, nice and easy in theory. But look, a lot of these defenses, it's only anti-air defenses pretty much. Like this Scortrith is going to come online, uh, Advanced Circuith. But if that if that comes on, you know, that's going to be a really powerful move. The bottom right is being taken. So that will mean that uh, we're going to see some Quasis dispatched to heckle that. Not, not the best versus buildings. So there will be an opportunity to respond. I like the little pocket gateway here just to make some more narrowing of the wall if, if ground units want to commit to attacking the static defense and also to make more localized production. Cantavis is going to go ahead and get unloaded. He might get scooped up and put up over here. It looks like that's the case. A move is going to commence. Not exactly up the ramp just yet. A storm for the back line. Oh, it's a little bit further back than you would like. Not on top of those Hydras. And what would be great is if it were over here, but the Vits are not actually being focus fired onto the Solarians. Three of them now, the, the count growing. And the stacked, oh, the stacked air, you know, getting hit hard by the Archon, the, the Patriarch, the Atreuses in the back. We got five more Vits down there. They need to shark in and get on top, but the Atreuses are going to do a great job at zoning them away. And it looks like 12 o'clock has to be conceded. I, I, I would love to see the workers get pulled here from Nablime because I don't think he can really put a stop to this. He only has a little bit of anti-ground. There we go. Workers finally getting pulled. Doesn't look like too many of them died. And the Hatcheros can get focused down from this safe vantage point, pretty much. The uh, Archon getting a lot of shield value, thanks to the Patriarch. It's staying alive for so long, way longer than you would normally see. And an attempt to, you know, run by, if you will, but there's nothing over there. There's double engram. You're never breaking that with Quasi. It's not in a million years. Archon finally going down. But, you know, there's only a little bit of anti-ground defense over here. And so that is going to be it for 12 o'clock. Instead, it looks like Nibai will transfer over towards that 3 o'clock location. Vits are going to go hunting. Maybe just a scouting to confirm that there is still no nine. That's going to be useful information for him. And we did see Almaxalisks come out. So these are good anti-capital ships because they have great, you know, they've got the same armor pen as Hydras with three, uh, but they're airborne, right? And so you can definitely get a uh, good value from them. But I am a little bit worried about the lack of, you know, heavy hitters, right? Quasis are not going to do it, but he just needs to get more and more mineral dumps. He's, he's not able to keep his money low right now. We'd love to see a couple more hatches in the main. And, you know, maybe some Zorius, maybe some Iziracores. Uh, he already has the tech for the latter, so that might not be a too, too bad of an option. And now, only now, we're trying to reestablish this uh, bottom right base. It looks like it was ended up canceled. Not that time, but canceled earlier. And uh, 12 o'clock being reestablished. Yeah, that was the Quasis forced that happen, uh, to happen, apparently. Oh, what a banger game. I'm glad we get to see a longer match between these two because the last one was uh, very aggressive from Nabon, kind of showed some colors that we don't normally see from him because he hasn't really... It feels like he hasn't practiced at least the matches that I've seen. He hasn't exactly practiced his early aggro. But he's had to play this game from behind pretty much from the word go. And uh, that's due to some great decision-making from none other than Hamster. Uh, but also uh, excellent, excellent play from Nabon to try to be reactive. Unfortunately, he's stacked up all of his units over some very heavy hitters like the Patriarchs and the Atreuses. When there's enough of them, they will deal a lot of damage. Trying to use the Matrolets to his best advantage so that he can, you know, replace the, the Quasilisks with Rilla Rokors. But there's too much of a critical mass of Protoss over here and not enough damage. There's plenty of utility, but not enough damage in this army. And I think the Almaxilisks dying so quickly uh, in, in such numbers really, really hit home. So it looks like the death ball strategy is going to work out for Hamster. But, you know, he's still getting heckled. He's still getting uh, hit pretty hard. The ensnaring brood passive, the aura that the Matrolith provides, making the Quasilisks reduce the efficacy of even the stewards that are launching from the Solarians. Great moves there. Like, honestly, that's a very, very good 
uh, debuff to have, but it does look like it's going to be a little bit too much. And we've got a horde of zealots plus some mixed in units from the other rounds that are going to be making their way towards 12 and then probably move into that third base location. Still doesn't actually shut down mining at, not, at three o'clock. So that's a little bit crucial. Looks like a couple of heckling units are going to come over here just to maybe get some good worker damage. And we'll see what units are dispatched to respond to that because the Nexus sure, surely should not be canceled. In fact, the workers could probably kill the quasis right now because I'm sure Nublime is going to be focused on other things. Committing the attack with the only the zealots and the, the patriarchs the Atreus is, you know, this sort of like little mix here uh, is going to be enough to eventually break through. Again, that you got to remember what the Patriarchs offer you. They get incredible value for melee units to stay alive for long periods of time. And now the commitment is going to come in to finally attack this unprotected th three o'clock location. Uh, Maxilisks and Vilgoricors, or sorry, Vilgoleths, trying to focus this back. And eventually it will. The Zealots do get thinned. It looks like the counterattack is going to come up here as well. It's like, oh, push and pull. You, you're, now your forces are on this side. I'm going to recommit with those forces. And then I'm going to shut down your units like the Evigralists that are coming out. And, you know, interrupt your, your resource points. Three o'clock is under attack. There's too much there to be cleared just from the units that are spawning in. The Evigralists are doing their best. But these uh, are base busters. They're not going to do much versus this level of force. And that is going to be Hamster on the board in a great macro game. PVZ, get plenty of value, plenty of education out of that one. And we are going to see these two players, not in the same group, mind you, but they will be taking on a couple of different looks of players. We'll see Hamster and Veek taking each other on. We'll see Nablime and Benno and Urbmon taking each other on in a separate groups. I really hope you guys are excited for this tournament. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned, man. It's starting in a couple hours from when this video goes live. If, you, if you're already watching this after that, check it out, man. Check it out. There's, the VOD will be on the channel. I'll see you guys around for some more Cosmonarchy.